بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين Dear brothers and sisters this is a great honor to speak here and I'm grateful for the center and Sophie and Dr. Temu I have a few points to make can we imagine Islam and Muslim leadership, religious leadership, in a futuristic term. What are the needs? What we can do? What, what, how we can see the future of our uh, leadership there? We are producing a large number of ulama or religious leaders every year in Britain. My question is, is it possible to produce religious leaders strategically and that is the important part I was only last month in India and I was meeting some of the scholars from Deoband and they said in one district of Uttar Pradesh they produce 5,000 ulama every year now can you imagine where they will go what they will do and I hope we will not do the same in this country produce ulama for ulama's sake for things so that's the one point I think we need to think very carefully and I'm someone who believe that so far the Dara Ulums produce an excellent scholarship people may disagree with me but my last 15 years of experiences in, in Markville Institute, I can say confidently that once these ulama who came from the ulum background enters into higher education and they know what to do, immediately they put all their efforts. And every year, in my experience, either they are in distinctions or some of them in first class BA and they go for the further education, some of them are doing at the moment PhD and other degrees. So I, I respect that quality. Another thing that Darul Loom has given to the ulama and the young people is few things. First of all, adab. I must respect these people are huge, it's adab. There is also aspect of tarbiya. And Above all, there is akhlaq. These qualities we must preserve. These are very valuable qualities. And I believe these qualities are essential for the leadership as well. I think another proposition that I like to say is highlight is we need first to identify what kind of religious leadership we need in the future. And then you go back and change the syllabus. What we are doing at the moment, we are putting all our effort in Dars and Nizami and that's producing ulama, hoping everything will be fine. Can we go back, track back, let's find out what are the areas that we need to put our efforts and see what we can do. I have three levels of three suggestions, three broad suggestions. And number one, there is a huge gap where Muslim religious leadership's role is so desperately in need. That is to provide leadership in a public square. A confident interpretation of faith in public life provides some sort of moral vision that is communicatable to the nations at large. I think that is a huge gap the religious leadership of ours has not been able to do. In a number of occasions, I have seen religious leadership being provided by a chemist or a doctor somewhere who has very little knowledge about a community or even the subject they are talking about. That is one thing that we can open and do. Their role would be crystallized, draw together, 
make some sense of it, what is going on with people which was a ra which were rather slowly proce process that is just making a pronouncement. Try to make some statement, try to make some sense of what is going on. That is a very important contribution that would be. We need to set agenda as a leaders. We are always responding to agendas. Can we set our own agenda and say this is what we need to do? My second point and second area that I think is very important is to do tachasus, specialization. Mufti Mangera had just highlighted. But Mufti Mangera's and the response to a question, should we wait for 40 years? No. But we should also be very careful when in 2012, a young man came to take admission in BA class in Markville Institute with full turban and full dress, and he makes sure everybody knows he is mufti. He is only 17 or 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, I would be very suspicious of this mufti. Mm -hmm. He will create problems. That's my worry. So there are these tahassos, specialization. I think the work that some of these people that just you have heard is excellent. We are in a process of moving towards some direction, somewhere. So tahusus is something that we do, need. A group of religious leadership is required to specialize, to address the current social and communal issues, current business transaction, medical ethics, inheritance, interreligious marriages, interfaith issues, and the rest of what Mufti Mangera has said, we need to highlight those issues as well. Let me come to quickly on the third point. Third set of leadership that we need is the expertise that deals with the masajid, madaris, Quran classes, madrasa, evening classes, etc. Through this system, today, alim and alima have been prepared. My problem is, over the last so many years, in my class, I see Huge gap. There are people who are excellent. They say study is very good, very high. And on the other hand, their study needs lacking. There is a problem. So this gap in madrasa system, I believe, we need to address as well. We did a consultation in October 2017, and we asked a few things. Is there a way that we can address this issue by standardizing or maybe benchmark who is an alim, who is an imam, or who is qualified for imam? I think imam is a very difficult term. So can we benchmark these people? It doesn't matter whether you are Deobandi or Barelwi, do it yourself. Let the madaris of Deoban come together and say, this is what we mean by an alim. This is what we mean by a graduate. We do not have that. At the moment, it's at the teacher's blessing. If he says, OK, well, you're a wonderful man, here is certificate, go home. And this person becomes alim. And there are others who are still lacking in this qualification. So I think this is another area where we need to really concentrate on that. Who should design this? standard and how it should be implemented, let us leave it to the different groups of thought as long as they come up with some idea of standards, some sort of benchmark, I think that will be very useful. Now these are the three points, but it raises a number of other things. Once we know what kind of things we need to do, I think we need to think very carefully for the future leadership without losing the content and importance of Darsan Nizami. Can we add something more, subtract something, create our own? This is not something that nobody has done before. Sri Lankan experience is one of those where this bringing two together has been very successful. 
the people can go, either they want to become a religious leaders, they want to go to the Madaris, they can take that route, or they want to go to other sciences and teaching in other places, they can do the same. But there is a basic level of education, and then from there they go to different directions. Can we think about that? That is one area that we need to think about that. <coughs> now, reading at the who will teach this? Ideally, I believe all sciences, Islamic sciences, Dirasat Islamia, or Ulum al Islamia, should be taught under one roof, if possible. If not, try to create some sort of accreditation, validation process until you become self-sufficient and you can move on that. I think there is a need for that, that can we produce under same roof. In, in Europe, they are trying to bring the ulama, darul ulum, or teaching of religious leaders under universities. And I can tell you it has almost failed, in my view. A number of experiences is not working. Because the people who come from university, community doesn't trust. They, are, they have no trust on that. So therefore, religious leadership has to have a pe peculiar, interesting area that you can teach, you can develop those. Now, in this madaris, you can not only Islamic studies, but you can include sociology, philosophy, and other things. Well, under one danger is, if you go too far to university side and bring the undergraduate master's program under the roof of a, of a madrasa, the danger is that that tarbiyah tik, what Harun Sida has called tarbiyah tik, pedagogy and adab will be, I think, will be in danger. How to fund such a system and where ultimately these graduates will go is our challenge. Now, this is why I think we need to put together, a, people should think together how, for what purpose we are producing ulama, religious leaders in future. I think that is a very important part. What short, short of language should be, this also should be decided and discussed. Ibrahim College said, we have now decidedly, Urdu has been we left. I would say Urdu is a second language of heaven. <laughs> if you can't speak uh, Arabic, you speak Urdu, you will be pass. <laughs> so you have removed that one, now you're the English now. That's fine, that's good. Now, I'm, I'd like to highlight one important thing. Fifteen years ago, I was asked to give a talk on Islam in the West, among the ulama. I said, I would like to speak to you for 35 minutes. You can ask me whatever question you want to ask me. But I asked the chair, please give me opportunity to ask a question to the audience. So it just happened, the question to the audience was that I am not an alim, I am a lay person, but whatever I have learned, a mufti must know urf and adat, customs and practices of the people. Now in Europe and in Britain, urf and adat, customs and practices, means that we must know the enlightenment traditions philosophical tradition of this society, British history, European history, as part of Orf. And at the same time, to understand the religious understanding of the culture of this place, we must know Christianity and Judaism, Judeo-Christian tradition, as part of Islamic studies, future leadership. If I am wrong, please correct me, I said. There was a minute long silence. Somebody raised the hand and said, whatever you said is fine, but we didn't know how to do it. I think that was 15 years ago, but I'm more hopeful after listening to this panel this morning that we are inching towards that position. And remember, 
we have a huge task ahead. We need to come together, think all these things, these challenges. Thank you very much. I hope I've met your time. Thank you.